Welcome to the video. Don't forget to hit that bell icon for weekly videos on historical figures and stories. If you enjoy the content, be sure to subscribe. The story of Ubba is set at the height of the Viking Age in the 9th century. During this time, the fragmented land of England was lots of different kingdoms, all vying to expand their lands and influence. All of these ambitions of the English kings and lords would come to a swift end when Ubba and his brothers sailed across the North Sea and touched the English shores. Ubba was recorded as a key player during this time and would wreak havoc all over England with the great heathen army. This is his story. I would like to thank Magellan TV for sponsoring today's video. Magellan TV is a documentary streaming service founded by filmmakers. This has resulted in Magellan TV having the most varied and interesting history content available anywhere. It covers ancient history, modern history, war, biographies, and so much more. On the platform, I have personally been watching A Warrior's Way. This series traces the lives of famous warriors from childhood training to bloody battles. The first episode is about Sigurd Bjornsson, the Viking exile. In today's video topic, Abba would revolt against his own father Ragnar, and he was still not sent away. So imagine what Sigurd Bjornsson did to receive the punishment of exile, especially for a culture and religion that revolved around war and strength. 15 to 20 hours of new content is added each week, with a growing collection of 4K high definition content. Magellan TV can also be watched anywhere, at any time, on your TV, laptop or mobile. History Profiles viewers will get a one month free trial by clicking the link in the description. The annual membership only costs $59.88. So it's only $4.99 a month. So what are you waiting for? Click on the link in the description. First, let's have a look at Ubba's ancestry and early life. Ubba's father was the legendary king and raider, Ragnar Lothbrok. Ragnar was famed all over the North Sea and due to his status as a warrior, warriors and women alike would naturally flock to him. He would lay with an unnamed peasant woman who he had fallen in love with. He would court her father Esbern by inviting him to banquets and being kind to him. The unnamed woman would soon give birth to a son and Ragnar would name him Abba. When Abba grew up however, he cast off all respect for his father this would soon change however, as Abba was more like his father than he knew. Restless, eager, and keen for an adventure. Ragnar would soon prepare for an expedition to the Hellespont, the waterway that forms a boundary between Asia and Europe. Ragnar would summon an assembly of Danes, and Abba would answer his father's call to war. Thus, father and son would be united. Abba and his father Ragnar would go through much together while they were raiding. Firstly, they would subdue the king of the region by the Hellespont, called King Dia. King Dia, however, had an alliance with a Russian king, and when Ragnar saw his boundless army, he knew that facing them could mean certain death. According to the Gesta Denorum, Ragnar then, instead of fleeing, came up with a plan to put horses on wheels, which could essentially mean that he had the horses tied to chariots in order to break the enemy line. During the battle, the enemy line was broken and the Vikings would create a mass slaughter on the Russians and their allies. Abba would spend five years raiding and roving alongside his father Ragnar and other Viking forces. He had now proved himself as a military veteran and a savage warrior. When Abba came home, he had changed remarkably. 
Having seen much of the world, he now had a very different view on life, having seen a lot of different lands and kingdoms. He now knew that the only way to attain anything was through power. He would soon meet up with his grandfather Esbern, who tried to convince Ubba to take the throne of his father for himself. Ubba would listen to the poison being spewed in his ear and would give in to his selfish desires. He would now envision himself with a crown upon his head. Esbern would try to bribe the Earls of Sweden to desert Ragnar and join his cause, but it was to no avail. Word of this treachery would soon reach Ragnar. He travelled to where Esbern resided, confronted him and then slew him himself. He cut off his head and set it upon the prow of his ship, a message to all would-be traitors. Ragnar's son Ubba would flee, but would soon re-emerge with a considerable amount of warriors loyal to him. Ubba would wage war in Zealand against his father's forces. Ragnar, an experienced military commander and being unmatched in combat, would quickly break Ubba's ranks and he would begin assaulting his forces from all sides. Ubba, however, couldn't be killed. He slew so many of the enemy's warriors that he was surrounded by a pile of corpses by the time he was overwhelmed by the thickening masses of the enemy. He was eventually captured. Ragnar and Ubba would eventually have an emotional reconciliation and Ubba would be restored to his ancient favour as one of the sons of Ragnar. After this, Ubba disappears from history until he sets sail for England with thousands of Vikings to avenge the death of his beloved father Ragnar. Ubba had one goal, to avenge his father and make England burn. The Vikings would sail to England in the mid-9th century. According to the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, a massive force of heathens led by Ivar the Boneless would winter in East Anglia. They would gain valuable intelligence and resources until they struck the Kingdom of Northumbria in 867, where they waged war against King Ella and eventually executed him with the ritualistic Blood Eagle the sons of Ragnar would personally do this to avenge their father. The Vikings then seized York and they were making the average Englishman live in fear. Abba and his brothers were cunning and resourceful. Knowing the English would be a lot harder to control under their direct rule, they would implement a puppet king. The king was called Egbert and he would appear as the king of Northumbria, but it was really the remaining sons of Ragnar who really ruled. They would hold the north of England and turn it into Daneland. In 869, the kingdom of East Anglia was conquered by the great heathen army. Ubba and his brother Ivar now had King Edmund at their mercy. According to Abba of Fleury, the Vikings would beat King Edmund and would taunt him about his faith. He was then tied to a tree where he was again savagely beaten. Edmund would ask Christ for courage, which only angered Ubba and Ivar, who then ordered their men to fill Edmund with arrows. An arrow riddled Edmund still refused to renounce his faith. Fed up and not moved by Edmund's cries to God, Abba and Ivar had him beheaded. The sons of Ragnar had now taken even more of England. They were killing kings, pillaging lands and destroying ancient bloodlines. And they wouldn't stop until they were dead. After the slaying of King Edmund the Martyr in 869, the Vikings would establish another puppet king for East Anglia called Oswald. After this, Ivar would disappear from English history and would journey north. Thus, several war bands within the great heathen army had split and Ubba 
would command his own force of men, as would the rest of Ragnar's sons. For a year, the great heathen army would campaign against the West Saxons. Afterwards, they would attempt to conquer Mercia. Much of it would be conquered, and the Vikings now held the whole north and a large part of Mercia. Wessex alone was resisting. In the year 875, the great heathen army invaded Wessex and seized Wareham, forcing King Alfred the Great into a temporary exile, where he would hide out in a marshland while gathering his strength. A part of the great heathen army led by Ubba would sail to the coast of Countisbury in 878 and would land on the coast with 23 ships and 1,200 men. When they landed, they discovered that the Saxons had taken refuge in a stronghold called Kernwit. Ubba would prepare to besiege the fort. Ubba's tactic was to wait until those inside surrendered through lack of food or water, but Odda, the elderman of Devon, knew Alfred was in exile and a relief force wasn't going to come. According to Brother Assa, the West Saxons burst outside of the fortress one day at dawn and were able to overwhelm the Viking forces and kill over 800 men. Ubba, the son of Ragnar, was amongst the fallen. They even captured Ubba's raven banner, which was thought to be magical and imbued with evil powers of pagan idols. With Ubba's death and the further fragmentation of the great heathen army, Alfred the Great would soon re-emerge from his exile and unite southern England to retake his lands. So, what do you think would have happened if Ivar, Bjorn, Sigurd, Hvitsuk and Abba all stayed together after the death of King Ella? Do you think they could have taken the whole of England just like they did the North? Let me know your thoughts in the comment sections down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe and share, and I'll see you all soon for another History Profile.